Good evening. Welcome to our first session of MBE Action this summer. We are going to have 20 winning sessions between now and the end of July. We are going to cover torts, contracts, and criminal law very thoroughly. You're going to learn exactly how it's tested on the exam. And you're also going to develop writing skills because you're all going to write 10 questions and explanations for each of the three subjects. So the result will, in this pass-fail class will be you will have a little portfolio of stuff you've actually written, and <clears throat> we will begin to develop a library of original resources on the multi-state. In this class, what we will be using primarily will be Barbary bar review materials on these three topics. I know this stuff well. It's well written, and what you'll be studying here probably more than anything else is reading. We will be refreshing the black letter law all the way through on every question, but what's most important is to understand how the material is being tested. And I will give you a few ideas up front about how to read this stuff. Then each class is going to have the same format. I will distribute a bunch of questions. You'll do them. We'll cover them together. We have approximately 18 questions per class. And what I have in mind is to do two sets of nine. It's just as easy for us to do them all at once, but I think maybe splitting it up in half will break it up a bit and make it a little bit more uh, useful. Also, I am publishing all of the video and all of the questions and also all of Barbary's answers online. So after each session, when the video is up, you'll also get to see the written answers that Barbary has provided. And those will serve along with the questions <clears throat> as a model for your own writing. Because we, all of us who teach law agree that writing multi-state questions is hard. This isn't easy work. It's much harder than writing essay questions. And the reason is because <clears throat> the answers have to be logical, even the incorrect ones. And what you'll see today, just in our very first session, is <clears throat> some of these questions are better than others. They're, they're, they're just smarter. And You'll become discriminating about that, too. Okay, some ideas about how to read and answer multi-state questions. And this is directly analogous to the material that I gave you in torts about essay questions. The first thing you should do is read the call of the question and read the answer picks, rather than reading the whole narration. And the reason for that is the call of the question often, not always, but often, will identify the issue. So it could well be that the fact pattern will look like issue A, but then the call of the question indicates it's actually issue B. Then looking at the calls of, at the actual answer choices, it's often possible to weed out one or two of the picks before you even read the fact pattern. Now to be practical about this, thinking into the future, on the real bar exam, you sit for two sections of 100 questions each. You have three hours for each section. That translates into 1.8 minutes per question. In class, I'm going to give you approximately two minutes per question, maybe a little bit more. It isn't a race here. Also, I'm going to collect your, grade, your hand-graded papers, the answer picks, each time. Now, here, now don't wince like that. I want you to smile and be happy. And here's why. Because there's a good reason. You should be pleased about this. And I'll tell you exactly why. We have an incentive for you to get the lowest score possible on this. I don't even want you to study before you come to class. I really don't. I've got some plans for how you should spend your time. But studying before class isn't one of them. And the reason is... We're not judging you or giving you grades based on these scores. But we're going to administer these questions to you again in two or three years, and we're going to trace the improvement between now and then. And we're doing it in a, in a statistically valid but not terribly rigorous way. And we're going to show the data to the people that are, to the state bar, basically. That's the idea. So we're tracking the data informally, but hopefully fairly accurate. That's the idea. So there's nothing to worry about. It's okay if you get zeros. 
I want you to try to do careful work, and after you pick the one that you think is correct, try to indicate why you eliminated the other ones. And then when I get up and talk about the questions with you, I may ask you some questions now and then about them, but mostly I want to focus your attention on the language and on the ideas, the black letter law, in other words. Now there's a very good correlation between MBE score and passing the exam. But more people pass the multi-state than pass the essays. So one more idea before we jump into doing a few questions. I'm also publishing the National Conference of Bar Examiners outlines of testable issues for all these topics. And I'll give you a link to where that page is. What I think you should be doing, here's what I think you should be doing instead of studying. Keep track of your mistakes. So you're going to turn in the, the answer page to me. Keep track of your mistakes on the actual fact patterns and questions, too. Then, between sections of torts or sections of contracts, go to that outline and annotate the outline with your errors, to the extent those errors were based on not knowing the law. My theory, which is you know, not terribly original work, but my theory is that if you get a multi-state question wrong, it's for one of two reasons. Either you didn't know the law, or you misread it. And if you didn't know the law, keeping track of your er legal errors gives you a, just a checklist of stuff to memorize. It's very simple. Now, the language errors are a little more sophisticated. But each of us tends to find certain language tricks that the examiners play that we tend to get wrong no matter what subject is being tested. All right, well, familiarity will breed contempt, and it will also help you see those tricks being played out. And once you start to identify them, you reduce your number of errors. Now, one last thought is this. A passing score on the real multi-state bar exam is roughly 65%. That is not a terribly ambitious goal. So just like with the essays, this is something to see as almost like a puzzle, to learn how it's constructed and to learn how to take it apart. Okay, so I think I'll give you I'll give you a couple of other ideas up front. Here are here are three ways, further ways to eliminate incorrect answer picks. And we'll see these play out. These are guidelines, not hard rules. Number one. A more precise answer choice is better to a more vague choice. Preci precise choices tend to be better. Another second idea, if there is a statute in a question, apply it mechanically. Put reason ahead of emotion, and sometimes the examiners will give you a statute when there isn't a majority rule or where there is some disputes. When you recognize that, it's even more good reason to, to go with the statute. Um, number three, a correct statement of law is preferable to a correct statement of facts. So I think you can start to see the pattern developing here, that this is a game of precision, and it's focused on language. And then one last idea that I'll give you this is, it's, as you do more of these, it becomes easier to eliminate answer picks, which somehow mischaracterize the facts or misstate the law. So what, we'll, what we're going to see here is, you're going to make a lot of mistakes because of tricks that are being played. This is not an intelligence test. This is a test of your knowledge of this exercise. And that's why doing thousands of these questions and writing many of them, and if I get to teach this class again for criminal law and procedure, for constitutional law and evidence, and civil procedure, you're going to be writing fact patterns for all of those subjects too. And I think it's a good idea. It's all pass-fail, and if you want to write more than 10 each, you're welcome to. Uh, I find that when I get into writing these things. I tend to get on a roll and I can write a lot of them and I don't want anything to do with it for a while. Okay, one uh, last statistical idea is 
on the actual exam, on the multi-state bar exam, seven subjects are fair game. Torts, contracts, property, criminal law and procedure, constitutional law, evidence, and civil procedure. They're all equally weighted, basically. <laughs> contracts has 28 questions. All the others have 27. Now, focusing on torts, 27 torts questions. Half of them are going to be about negative half of them about negligence. And then the other half is the rest of the outline. Now we're going to see that it's possible for them to test multiple elements of the outline at the same time. So it, it's hard to characterize individual questions as being only about one topic. The fact pattern may be about negligence, but it may be framed as a strict liability question, and there may be nuisance answer picks too. So they're testing a broad amount of material. Now, I will cut the video at this point. I will distribute the torts questions with the answer sheet on top. Remember, I get the answer sheet with your name on it at the end with the incorrect answers marked wrong. You get as many wrong as you want, I'm not going to say the more the better, because I'd actually want you to read them carefully. And if it turns out that one or two of you are idiot savants at this, or excuse me, just savants at this, then great. I'll just find you a bunch more questions to do. 